Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Morning, everybody. <clears throat> Welcome day after free asshole consulting day. Uh, we will find out if that was a success or not. Maybe even by tonight. It takes a while for Amazon affiliate numbers to post. But Michael writes, fuck, God damn it. Assholes? No, Michael, I'm not doing your extra, I'm not doing your extra request. This is called mission creep. Write all your shit down once, guys. That's the price. Then don't come to me later. Oh, hey, I have this other thing. Well, too fucking bad for you. Hi, Cappy. I have a big problem. I'm hoping you can help. My name is Mike. I'm a 21-year-old guy. I have a major problem with conflict or confrontation. Since I was a little kid, I was very sensitive. I always take it to heart. For example, a teacher got mad at me. Take it to heart much more than the other boys. As a kid, I was very sheltered and overprotected by my parents. Well, there you go. So, that's, that's why you did it. You didn't, doesn't sound like you have an older brother or an older sibling. I never went to, over to anyone's house. The only sports I played were swimming and karate, but I never played any real, real sports like base, baseball, basketball, or football. All I would do is go to school and then come home and eat, watch TV, play video games, listen to music. Okay. <clears throat> My dad was also ver verbally abusive. He yelled and swore at me a lot and called me names and sometimes hit me. <clears throat> he wouldn't yell and hit me to teach me a lesson. He would only yell and hit me if I pissed him off. For example, if I spilled or broke something by accident, he'd scream and swear at me and possibly hit me. As you, you can imagine, this scared the shit out of me and probably damaged my self-esteem. Yeah, and it probably... It, well, that, not probably. That's the number one reason why you avoid confrontation or conflict. Because you would have gotten killed. It's, uh... I'm not a big fan of nerds. I was one. I know deep in the heart what drives a nerd and it's laziness you don't want to hit the gym but at the same time we cannot dismiss uh the other fact that pussies cowards and weaklings in the form of bigger men and sometimes women but i don't think really ever had a girl pick on me um pick on guys who are significantly smaller than them and those guys i have utter contempt for because at the argument is always Oh, well, are you going to stand your ground against a real man? It's like, uh, this is not an equal matchup. You basically have a weapon over me, and that's an extra foot in height, an extra 40 pounds, and an extra five inch of reach. Um, and your hinterbrain kept you alive because confronting them would have, in the olden days, resulted in assured death or being maimed. Uh, and it starts with your old man, where that is probably even more heavily skewed uh, in terms of physical height and strength and size uh, because you're roughly, you, you are in the same age group, so I know some guys can get significantly bigger, but there's a limit. With your old man, you could be a little two foot nothing and your dad could be six feet tall. I mean, there, he's a giant compared to you. And I, I'm very sorry that he did that to you, but that, that's why. And I wouldn't say that you have a problem uh, with conflict or confrontation, but that has been your survival mechanism. Because if you didn't, if you didn't have that quote problem, you'd be dead uh, or injured. You know, if you got up in your dad's face and punched back, you got in these bullies' faces, but they just fucking kill you. So I don't think it's necessarily a problem with conflict or confrontation back then. Now dealing with it uh, because it has bled over into other aspects like you don't go hang out with people you don't go out because logically why would you that's a bigger person over there and if my dad is any indication he's going to beat the shit out of me um yeah and then self-esteem i'm sure it, i don't know what self-esteem is yours how much you value yourself i never un understood self-esteem you should value yourself that's it um i was very timid as a child i was bullied as a kid never had the balls to stand up for myself okay so then you had to deal with that in the sixth grade i was bullied so bad i wanted to kill myself to this day i've never been in a real fight uh i've been in a couple of grappling shoving matches but never exchanged blow i feel I really feel like a pussy for never having been in a fight my dad hasn't either oh good brave man picking on his kid I'm afraid that if I ever am in a situation now as a man that I won't have the balls to stand up for myself. I tell myself that I shouldn't blame myself so much as it is my parents' fault for protecting me and your dad. 
although I still feel a lot of guilt. When I interact with other people and a confrontation starts to feel very uncomfortable, with other people and a confrontation starts and and a confrontation starts I feel very uncomfortable I always try to hold my ground like at my job when customers are assholes it bothers me more than it bothers most other employees but I force myself to make eye contact and not back down good all right still afraid of confrontation both physical and verbal I want that to change if it's even possible all right look <clears throat> you will never get rid of the fear of confrontation um, and this is a good thing because confrontation, even today, uh, if it starts verbal and it goes physical, uh, even if it's verbal, there can be huge costs and consequences for it. In the olden days, you, you could get injured, permanently injured, disfigured, or killed. That, that's how it worked. Uh, today, confrontation, even if it's verbal, you could lose your job or get reprimanded. Uh, someone goes and narcs on you, I don't know, whatever the social justice warrior pussies do. Um, so there is good reason to want to avoid conflict or confrontation. However, your pride and your self-respect, so this is a good sign, I mean, you now have self-esteem or self-respect because you don't want to back down. Uh, and this is probably held over anger and rage for having all these other people in the past run over you where you're just not going to have it happen again. Because uh, it is tormenting, it is terrifying, being this little kid and having giants uh, torture you all the time. Uh, so I'm not even necessarily saying it's a it's a bad thing if you. I mean, I get up in people's faces. Uh, I had a contractor not show up for a gig, and I called up and reamed the motherfucker. And there's a piece where it's like, God, I hope he shows. Up. I just hope he's just come and walk on my property right now. I so that. I think maybe you've made a little bit more. The fact you don't want to back down and the fact you're forcing yourself to make eye contact, I don't necessarily think is a bad sign. There's going to be drawbacks to it. You could get in a fight. You could get into fisticuffs. Um, but you got to balance it between pushing a confrontation and then simply having self-respect. Uh, also not backing down is going to prevent other people from screwing you over. There's very few people, well, as you get older, older 21 maybe not, there's very few people that are going to carry it all the way to confrontations, the chest bumps and all that other shit. And you don't want to just start it for petty ass shit. But if your boss try, tries to start taking advantage, your boss lies about job duties, you uh, you start an internship, and uh, the HR lady said that you were going to do this, and now you're filing and faxing. I have found a good screaming at them, not screaming, just giving them a new asshole getting up in their face uh, results in actual better advancement in Korea. I mean, you're going, you lied about it. I'm going to fucking sue you. You're going to do this, 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 and this. Fuck you. And that scares the light out of them because after, especially girls, but after about 30, certainly after 30, these guys don't see fights. And a lot of these dude bros who were bullies in the past who would love the fight, they know they can't fight you as an adult because then they go right to jail. Then there's criminal charges. See, it's okay to torture, terrorize, and physically assault kids when you're below 18. That's fine. That's legal. But then magically, once you turn 18, then it becomes illegal. Um, so I think you got a little bit more leeway I think you got the right balance of having self-respect but not pushy confrontation or starting shit. And you're still young, but um, you gotta, you want to be able to discern and measure what kind of response you need in terms of confronting people on their bullshit who are trying to screw you over. Because it's going to drop off real quick. Now that you're 21, you're not going to have people like coming up and starting fights with you. It's not, not middle school anymore. You are going to have these assholes trying to fuck you over in other regards and capacities, like in your career, um, lying about... So most of it's going to be in the career. <clears throat> most of it's going to be that. <clears throat> um, I mean, unless you're going to bars and there's really drunk guys, you're just, it's, not gonna, it's just not going to happen. And if it does, then what you got to do... Unfortunately, in an ironic sense, if there's some drunk guy at a bar, you let those guys be. Goes, those guys be, because uh, it ain't going to end good for you legally. 
potentially physically, and especially if they have their dude bro friends with them. Because again, these guys are cowards and pussies. They never fight you one on one. They always have a bunch of buddies. They're always bigger and stronger. Uh, but I'm talking more by this time, by your age, it's legal. You don't want to. You don't. The the costs and consequences is no longer physical impairment or death or injury. It's a, tr a track record, a, a criminal record for assault. Whether you started it or not isn't going to matter. And then you're going to go and try and be employed. Now you got a criminal record. Now you got a problem. However, if your your employees, you know, and you, I'd even argue to have a lot more patience with your employees or not employees, your customers, because they, most of the people are dumber than shit. But if someone gets up in your face and it's completely unacceptable, oh yeah, man, you let them have it. And then if your boss gets in effect, say, fuck you. <clears throat> I'm not tolerating this bullshit. That's unacceptable. And you know, I, the customer is not. I mean, you stand your ground. You might lose some jobs. There's going to be costs and consequences. But again, as I said before, it's been my experience that if you call employers on their bullshit, you call people on their bullshit in general. Um, heck, I even remember um, my neighbor <laughs> next door, he was having his... Uh, what's it called, his driveway redone. And he thought he'd just put his garbage can on my property when he could have just put it on the road. And I grabbed the garbage bag and I dumped it right on his property. Guess what he don't do no more? He doesn't put his garbage bag on my property no more. So holding your ground, I, I like that now, especially because <clears throat> when, when you were in middle school, you should just grab the baseball bat and take it to their knees. Um, you know, not, not to kill them, uh, but I, I, I'm a firm believer that if somebody's got an 80-pound advantage on you, that's a weapon. You need to equal the odds. And, and then I know, you know those days, it, your parents aren't going to help. Your teachers aren't going to help. It, you you got to defend yourself. Uh, but then Ben would have been like, oh, you see what Jimmy did to Bobby? Jimmy broke Bobby's knees. Holy shit. I'm not going to fuck with that kid. Even if he is four foot whatever. Um, so I think I like the fact that you're standing up for yourself. You're always going to be, there's always going to be this core of confrontation. What you might even have to worry about, and this is what I'm trying to gauge, is that your anger and rage from the past makes you no longer afraid, and now you have no governors whatsoever, and now you're getting up in people's shit, and now you're starting the fights and the confrontations, and now you're going to jail, and now a bigger guy gets you. Um, if I'm uh, still afraid of confrontation, both physical and verbal, I want that to change if it's even possible. The, it you're making progress. It's never going to go away, and it shouldn't because that's part of your survival. It's part of your hardwiring. Um, but if you still want to have more confidence, I think you should go uh, continue on with karate or maybe more jujitsu. Karate, I don't know what kind of karate you were doing, but if it's just the, oh, you tapped him there, you tapped him there. Ah, well, well, well executed kick. Here's your ribbon. That's not a fight. Uh, Jiu-jitsu, which technically isn't a fight, you're sparring, is a little bit closer. Um, maybe get MMA would be the closest thing. That would where you're actually fighting, uh, even though your, your intention is not to kill the person. There's no bull shots or anything like that. Um, that would give you a little bit more confidence and certainly calm you down about confrontation and survival. But you should always have a little bit of fear or concern about confrontation and conflict. Um, that's the thing. All right, so here's why I'm asking you, Campy. Why have I always been so timid and sensitive? Your dad and your bullying. Do you think it's entirely situational? I mean, being overprotected? Yes. <clears throat> or do you think I was born that way? No, no. Um, and if they asked you how tall you were, yeah, how tall were you in the... I was consistently in the 98th, 99th percentile of both height and weight. I was a foot, tall, a foot taller than my classmates. I was on track to being over six foot five and an adult. Oh my God, then yeah, dude, totally. Then it was totally psychological. This was your old man. How did you get bullied when you were in... Why didn't you just fight back? Yeah, then it is totally uh, your old man. Dude, if I was 6'5", oh, I stopped growing at a young age, however, and turned out to only be 5'10". I leaned out in middle school in the beginning of high school when I was 16. I went from 200 to about 265. Then when I was 17, I oh, well, you're a fat fuck. That's why you got picked on. 
I've been around 272.8 for a lot. Okay, yeah, you're fat. That's dealing with thinners. You're down to 230, 235. Good. Sorry if that was too much information. No, I just want to know, like, how, okay, so it wasn't your height and wasn't survival. All right, so it was survival with your dad, but you should have been okay in middle school. You were probably the gentle giant in middle school and you didn't want to fight. Well, I've always been so timid and sensitive. You're old man. Do you think it's entirely situational, I being overprotected? It could be a little bit of that. Do you think I was born this way? I don't think you were born that way. Is it, is it possible to change? I'm pessimistic about becoming a strong surf man because I've been a weak and timid my whole life and fear that I won't be able to undo my entire childhood. Well, you can't undo your childhood. That's what it is. Uh, but right now, today, you can stop being a pussy about it. Like, oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Lose the fucking weight. Hit the gym. Get into sparring. That's it. It's not more complicated. Um, you know, you're not going to go out in the streets and find bullies and beat them up. But yeah, and, and here's how you change. It's, it's, not, it's not me telling you what you got to do. It's you deciding it. That's what all these problems are in asshole consulting. And it's whether or not you guys are going to be done pussying around and actually get the balls and stop being lazy to do it. Or you just want to complain about it and, oh, here's a simple way you do this. Can I take a pill? Can I take a pill? And stop. I want the non-pussy pill. I take it. I'm no longer. You just, no, there's, there's, there's a hard way. The hard way is you go to the gym. You go and sweat. You think the gym is hard. <clears throat> Wait till you got your fucking Mikey's ball sack right there. He's got you pinned down in a fucking jujitsu move and you can't fucking move because he's much better than you. If it is possible to change, should I? How should I go about becoming more confident, and less afraid of confrontation? Sparring in a martial art, hitting the gym, losing the weight, stop being a pussy. And don't ask me, well, how do I stop being a pussy? You stop being lazy. You just go do go do what I said. I was thinking about taking martial arts classes or joining the military. The military will not take you at that weight. You're going to have to lose a lot of weight. Military would help. Military would help, though. Do you think it would be necessary? To do all that, or should I just simply start hitting the gym, forcing myself to get out more and interact with people? Um, <clears throat> well, I want to join the military solely to, to lose your fear of confrontation. I, I would join the military first and foremost because it's a great opportunity. I think every young man should do it, uh, and it would help. But yeah, starting the, you got, you're going to have to go to the gym anyway because you're a fat fuck, all right? And forcing yourself out more to get out with and interact with people would certainly help. Um, but, I, you know, and just realize not everyone's going to want to fight you. And you're still young enough that the opportunity will present itself. And some dude bro or douchebag is going to want to get into it with you. The question is whether you're going to be prepared to take them on. Your height, I mean, I, I know you're not six foot four, um, but you got enough weight on you that if you turn some of that into muscle, you should. Prove formidable. Uh, by the way, you're always bold and assertive person, or did tough situations make that way? Yeah, tough situations made that way. I was a nerd. I wasn't exactly like you, but I, I was a huge nerd because I was small. I didn't break 100 pounds until I think I was a junior in high school. Um, and my ad, ad, that certainly made me pissed off and angry. Um, but uh, where... I really became assertive was when I was 30 and realized just how much bullshit uh, my bosses and baby boomers were. That really, and that would set me off on the fuck you pattern. Uh, back in high school, by the time I was a senior, I just started getting lippy in people's faces. Um, like I would hold my ground. And that, you know, not unironic, and not ironically ended the, um, ended the bullying. Um, but even then, I wasn't that big of a guy. Um, working security, that definitely took away any fear. But I mean, I was so angry by that time. And then when I found out that the ba then that almost, and I have more to worry about starting confrontations that I can't finish or the consequences of that. Um, because I just hate the lies. I hate the lies and the hypocrisy and the bullshit that the vast majority of people in life uh, propagate on other people and how people try and make victims of other people just because you're smaller. Uh, that wasn't the case with employers. Employers, maybe they, maybe uh, employers do look at that and maybe they'll pick on the fat guy or the ugly girl or the skinny guy as adults. Um, 
But yeah, once I was 30, I realized just what a bunch of bullshit these bankers were. And you can almost tell who was like, you know, the, the football bullies and all that. But man, I get up in their shit. I <laughs> get pissed off. And, oh, man, they hate my guts. Um, but yeah, nobody, no one puts a fast one over Clary no more in terms of employment or uh, investments or anything like that. Nah, no one puts a fast one over Clary on education, your professors. And, and nobody, uh, fights or not, it's... It's just, well, of course, I always carry a gun and mace, but you know, I do know how to fight a little bit. Um, but it hasn't, you know, that's the other thing is I'm smart enough. I don't, I don't fuck around with the six foot four guy. That's, uh, no matter how good I am, but it's just, you know, you just like walk away. It's like, that's all right. That's all right. Because what's going to happen, here's another thing that'll help. It's not bad coffee. If you have a successful life, um, you're going to want to keep it. And if you're put in a wheelchair, or you get a criminal record, or you get killed, or whatever else because you decide to tangle with a larger guy, and you got your ass kicked, uh, you can't enjoy that life anymore. And it no longer becomes an issue of cowardice and not facing someone who's being mean to you or unjust. What you start to realize is guys who still act like that as an adult are guaranteed to run into someone bigger, stronger, who's going to fuck them up. And or, and or, uh, that behavior, well, and, that behavior is guaranteed to make sure that their lives suck. You can't be a bully at 35. Employers won't tolerate. Good women won't tolerate. Good men won't tolerate it. Um, and you just don't get promoted. You, you just, and you, and then you're, you're stuck as the really marginal contractor who can't show up on time because you're drunk all the time because you don't know why people won't give you the money you deserve in your mind. <clears throat> so there's an element of karma or letting life do the punishment for you because it will. And then it becomes much more of a judo, dodge, use their strength against them, you know, like water. Uh... You, you, you kind of let them fuck themselves up. Here's enough rope to hang yourself. Uh, but that's that's a little bit more zen easy. You're, you're not there. Right now, you got to worry about this fear of confrontation. I, I think you're working through it just fine if um, you are forcing yourself to look people in the eye and you are consciously not letting people run you over. That's good. But like I said... You got to balance that so you don't start confrontations or get in confrontations or fights that, well, you can't win. <clears throat> or you're not willing to face the consequences, let's just say that. But then to solve it, yeah, if you want to get rid of it and your fear and your gut, you're going to have to learn to fight. You're going to have to roll. See, that was the other thing is I did get in fights when I was a kid. Uh, you haven't even been in a fight. It's like a Cobra Kai. You've never been punched in the face? Punch everyone in the face! <laughs> So I did. You know, I had a younger brother, but I'd also get into fisticuffs with the local neighborhood kids and in school. Um, but you got you got to roll around with a bunch of guys. Nothing wrong getting a black eye. Uh, maybe you break an, an arm or something while you're sparring. But you got to do that. Uh, I don't want to see you a couple pics of you because you're fat. I I don't need to see it. Um, but yeah, that's that's uh, that's about it. All right, and good luck on your good congratulations on your weight loss. That's good. Keep it going. You're, I mean, again, that's more progress and sign of that. It's just you're gonna have to get in. You're gonna have to get into like a jiu jitsu, Krav Maga, or something. And um, yeah, that that'll give you the physical test. And then once you really, you also build up. Like when you were a kid, you could take a punch because your your muscle would build up to it. Like. You, all we did was punch each other in the shoulder. But even when you got into a fight, you could, it didn't matter. It, it wasn't until like 10 minutes after the fight did you realize, oh, wow, my leg is hurt or, or oh, I'm bleeding. Um, so if you get to that point where you just the adrenaline is going and you're not really what damage you're taking, you just... It, it, I don't want to say... It was fighting as a little kid, but it wasn't like to the death. It was just this wrestling and sparring and maybe you were punching them, maybe you get them into headlocks and... You would never kick him in the balls, that was the other thing, but you wanted to make sure the kid couldn't get up again. Well, the kid inevitably did get up again, no one went to the hospital. 
mothers today would freak out and sue the the other kids parents but you want to get to that point and sparring is at that point but controlled sparring because as adults now you can really fuck each other up seriously it's not like you're a little you know, a 10 year old kid can't throw a punch with enough force to knock some other kid out so. all right that's it we'll talk to you kids later toodles